Um, I believe voice technology is part of the inevitable evolution of how we as human beings relate to computers. So in the past, I think people had to learn the conventions of computers. So there was a punch card, there was a keyboard, there was a mouse. And increasingly we've seen the shift into touch and now into voice, which is the most original, natural human interface. So voice is easy, voice is human. And I think brands need to understand then how to have a more frictionless sort of interface with consumers. And voice affords that. Um, so that's really, really key on a basic ease and convenience level. Um, we also see the rise of voice assistants. So in the US you have Google Home, Amazon's Alexa, which has taken off. In China we have Ling Long with Ding Dong. Um, and I think increasingly as voice assistants spread, we will see that brands need to learn how to engage um, to be, have a presence. Uh, as people are switching to a more voice-activated search um, behavior. I think that's really interesting because there's been quite a diverse um, uptick of voice in Asia. So in China, which is the biggest market with sort of the most sophisticated use of voice um, and you know, what devices, if you will. So we have close to, I think, 30% of smartphone users in China using voice tech at least once a week. Um, and I think a lot of that is perhaps motivated by language because Chinese characters are much harder to type in. And so we see a lot of Chinese uh, consumers using um, voice with WeChat uh, rather than sort of typing in characters. So we hear a lot in our surveys and our research around how it's much more easy, it's perfect for lazy people in China. That's one part of it. I think the other part of it is, you know, we see much higher numbers in Asia compared to the global average based on our survey of people saying they're willing and they look forward to voice assistance, anticipating their needs, being more human, um, and sort of planning or coordinating their lives for them. So I think there is an appetite uh, for voice technology to make life better, simpler, uh, more fruitful and easier for Chinese consumers. Um, it was really interesting when we were working on this report, we found that in China there is um, a voice uh, assistant called Xiao Ai or Xiao Bing. And, and this is different actually from Amazon or Google because its main function is what they call emotional computing. So it's all about, its main job is to make you feel happy, to evaluate your relationship status and how you're feeling and to perk you up. And I think something like a quarter of Xiao Ai's users have said, I love you to her. So there's an incredible, I think, appetite um, and enthusiasm for voice and wanting that personal connection that comes with voice in China, for instance. In Singapore, we saw perhaps a slightly different picture, and I think part of that is because we haven't had the voice assistants really enter Singapore yet. So I think about a third of the respondents were not quite certain um, how voice would be useful for them, and so they're kind of adopting a more wait-and-see approach. But at the same time, I think there is a curiosity. There is an intent to adopt voice if it is relevant to their lives. So I think, again, more than half of Singaporeans said, you know, I would want a voice assistant that has human interactions, that remembers my past conversations with me, and is able to then proactively give me utility and sort of concierge me through my life. So I think Asia has a deferring landscape from immense enthusiasm in China to more wait and see approach in Singapore, but, but I think we are going to see a little bit um, of uptake as the voice assistants enter the market. three things brands can do. So one, um, we talked about this earlier, so as voice is the most natural, most human and intuitive human sort of interface, um, I think brands would do well to think about how they can afford consumers an, an easier um, a more frictionless experience through voice rather than sort of a conventional typing experience or a different searching experience. So one, on an ease and convenience level, and um, brands can think about how to make that journey easier for consumers. Two, and quite interestingly, and this leads into voice as part of the Internet of Things, right? I think consumers are thinking about um, or wanting a world in which they're able to speak to their fridge or speak to their TV or switch off the lights by speaking to them, or even in a changing room, you know, where you're able to have a voice assistant, you know, get you a different size, for example, or uh, um, sort of perhaps um, a voice concierge. Um, a voice activated concierge within a hotel chain. So this second trend is all about, I think, 
voice adding an element of interactivity and utility that wasn't there previously into embedded into products, embedded into services and brand offerings. So this is where voice really has an ability to make brands more useful in a proactive way for consumers. Um, and I think on a third level, it's about sort of being more personal. As we know, voice is, is more human, it is more personal. In part of our research, we found that you know, inevitably a number of um, respondents sort of developed feelings of intimacy or closeness and they couldn't help but say thank you and please to Alexa, for instance. So with voice, you do have more of a sense of personality and sort of emotional connection. So I think brands will now then have to figure out what is the right voice and by that, it's not just a metaphorical tone of voice, but literally, what is the right voice that would express the brand and articulate the brand so that we can then have a closer relationship with the people we speak to?